So uh, York has sort of ventured into the realm of cognitive science uh, occasionally. How do you think computational theory and computer science can help, help us understand biological systems and the human mind? Um, well, I think in many different ways. So I think I've, I've tried to work on several different angles. So, so one area is that in, with computer science you can define more precisely uh, what you're talking about as far as cognitive acts. So in, uh, informally we talk about learning, but uh, if, if you're a computer scientist you try to define more exactly what you mean by learning. So is it learning from examples, and if you're learning from examples exactly what is what are you meant to do at the end? So it, it enables you to define concepts uh, uh, more precisely, and because of that, maybe you can express more complicated concepts because you know you, you can use your definitions more cleanly than with the informal discussion where no one quite knows which what each each word means. So the human mind is sometimes modeled as a, an information processing system. Um, could you explain how that works for the general person? Well, it certainly, it seems that I. I it, uh, our uh, uh, interaction with the world is is all information processing. We, we we look at things, we hear things, and all these things are you can re regard as information. And then when we affect the word by moving things and and, and speaking, that's all information. So um, so clearly, in between, we must be processing the information to uh, to get the effects we want. And how how do you view sort of uh, the relationship between neural networks and biological neural networks? Are they similar? Are they analogous, and or are they completely different? Well, basically, I think they're uh, totally different. So, so f the neural networks people use in machine learning, they may have been inspired by uh, by biological neural networks, you know, decades ago. Um, but um, you know, actually, they're, they're you know they're extremely di dissimilar. I mean, I think the loose uh, connection. Was is is useful because you get inspiration for what to do, um, but uh, now um, if you work in that area, you, you need to distinguish between whether you're trying to make a better computer system or whether you're trying to understand how the brain works. Uh, there are the two different directions now. But can computational theory, for instance, give us insights into the limitation of the human mind, like bottlenecks and processing limits, uh, stuff, stuff like that? In, in in principle, yes, because uh, the, certainly the human brain is limited in numerically. So I've been interested in models of, of the brain where the, certainly the number of neurons is important, the number of connections each neuron has, um, and the speed of, uh, at which each neuron works in processing its information. And even the strength of the synapses is a very, very important parameter because it tells you how much uh, one neuron can influence another. Um, so all these parameters uh, limit how much computation the, the brain can do. Um, but I mean, going from uh, so these are I think are very important. But g going from understanding high level cognition from these low level things is beyond what we can do at the moment. But um, but in the long run, this must be the way to go <laughs> as far as science. How do you how do you validate this, these models uh, of the mind? And do you do you use like I don't know, fMRI studies or something like that? Or how do you validate the assumption? Um, uh, yes, I mean it's it's difficult. I, I, you know, I'm trying to do it with co collaborators in, in in a biology lab. Uh, so the problem is that um, the natural question to ask to validate the kind of models I have are just on the boundary of being doable experimentally. It's it's to do with recording for many neurons. So these theories all involve the fact that you know uh, when we process some natural. Uh, Situation, uh, the activity happens at many many neurons. So, if you want to understand, have experiments to verify that somehow, you have to record for many neurons at the same time, and uh, kind of you know, that's difficult. <laughs> yeah. yeah um. How close are we? What's the state of the art? Are we sort of, or how close? How far are we from a, a comprehensive model of the human mind? Would you uh. say? Well, yeah. So I think I think the uh, the scientific goal there is to is to take that statement <laughs> apart a bit. Um, so you know, so what I was uh, um, discussing this morning is this idea of educability. Uh, so there, I try to identify you know what aspects of the human mind are responsible for our ability to, to create civilizations, in which we are kind of different from other animal species. Um, and this, uh, in some sense, by limiting the scope of the of the search, it, in some sense, it becomes easier. And even by putting the by trying to de define the, the more complicated things we do, 
Um, in some sense, that also makes things easier because some tasks, some uh, computer tasks like in a vision, which you know, all kinds of animals have as well, have their own problems in explaining. Okay, so, so I think the scientific question is always how do you break this problem <laughs> down into doable parts? Yeah, you, you mentioned this concept of, of predictability. Could you elaborate or try to define it in some way? Um, yeah, so in some sense it's a replacement for the notion of intelligence. So we all use the word intelligence, but you know, who knows what it means? And you know, psychologists have agreed that they, they can't agree on what it means. So it's just not, not a very useful uh, notion, uh, although it's obviously used <laughs> all over the place. Um, so in some sense, my notion of educability is, uh, tries to capture a fundamental human intellectual uh, ability. And uh, besides basic abilities learning and reasoning, what it tries to capture, which uh, the other models usually do not, is how we are able to um, you know, receive instruction from other people. So we, individually, we can learn from experience to do something. But if you learn to do something from experience, then you can just tell me how, what you've learned, and I can pick it up without having to repeat all your experience. And this is basically how humans uh, manage to accumulate this vast amount of knowledge into a, human, a single person. So, so the experience of millions of people can be tr easily transferred. And you can get a, a student to learn in a few years the result of who, who knows how much effort in, in, in discovery. Um, so the um, so I think this basic notion of educability involves our uh, ability to, to be educated, which means both learning uh, by our individual experiences, but also learning from, other, from others. The, and the uh, miracle is that we integrate the two. So, so the fact that we can learn from our experience, uh, kind of all kinds of animals do that as well, they go around and figure out what to do. But the fact that uh, I can use you know, your experience, you can tell me, yes, you can summarize your experience and I can integrate it in my mind and use it as if it, as if it had come from my experience. That's kind of, I think, a very human. Uh, ability. So educability is about that. Do you think, uh, obviously we're the best at this, but do you think it's truly unique to humans or are other species capable of this to an extent as well? Um, well, I think, uh, um, so in this uh, book, of the goal is to identify in what way we're different. Um, and uh, so each component animals can do. Um, so certainly animals can learn, they can, they can teach, they, animals teach their uh, uh, their offspring things um, they learn from from others, um, but um, you know they certainly don't. There's no evidence that they've got this ability that you can keep telling someone, uh, send them to a lecture course, and and you know, week after week learn new new stuff and integrate them in their in their uh, um, in, in their mind. So we have it in a, t a totally different uh, degree. In, in, in this field, what do you think are the most exciting questions or the ones you, you're trying most to, to answer? Um, well, I mean, in this educability, this is totally new, new so, I, uh, uh, so I'm not, not sure. <laughs> so this is uh, something for the future. Um, but um, um, but we can talk, you want to talk about other aspects of biology and, and if, computer if science? Like, so, yeah. yeah. Um, so, for instance, um, there's an increasing number of studies on, on animal culture, on non-human animal culture, and, you know, it sounds very familiar educability, even something on bees, like some bees would teach others to forage more efficiently and something like that. So I'm wondering, you know, what's, first of all, is there something that's uniquely, innately human? And if it's not, then, you know, if it is, how do we define it? If it's not, then, you know, can we expect, or given enough evolutionary space, could other species reach the same level as well? Something like that. Be right. um. Uh, yes, so um, you know, so this, this, this issue that it's very, it's very hard to isolate anything which we can do, which animals cannot. That's true, and you know, as I mentioned earlier, so you know, Darwin noted that you know, it's, everything is a question of degrees. Um, that you know, we can do things better than other animals, but you know, he didn't find any one thing which we, which we can do. But I think the uh, so what we have to look for is, is more a, co a compound ability where there's some combination of abilities which we can integrate well, well better, better than other animals. And so this is what I try to do in, in the book. Um, so, um, so the evidence in animals of, of teaching, for example, 
parents teaching their kids, it's always they teach the same thing. It's, it's they know how to teach one thing. Um, but um, uh, so, but, but what I try to emphasize is that besides the, the teaching, um, which may be somehow, uh, okay, there's teaching, there's communication, but the more, most miraculous part is, in, in fact, I think, in the uptake, the fact that the learner can, uh, can absor absorb all this information and use it as, a, as if they've learned it uh, themselves. Um, so, so the teaching done by animals is usually the, uh, the, what the learner has to do is usually f uh, fairly simple. It's like imita imitate uh, someone or, or practice something. Uh, um, so the, it's, it's not very tact, you know, it's, it's like present, presenting the right experience to the, um, to the learner. It's not some abstract description of what they're meant to do. Okay, well, we can translate some more abstract description of what you're meant to do. Of, you know, if I've learned something, I can tell you an abstract description of what I've learned, and then you can absorb it and go out and do it. Um, so I think that's um, uh, different. And also, of course, language is pretty essential to do this. But uh, just saying language by itself isn't an, an explanation of why we're different. Uh, you can teach uh, apes language to some extent, but that doesn't make them different. Well, um, um, so I emphasize the, this integrated uh, neural structure we have, which, where we can learn from experience, we can, uh, we can apply our experience to examples, we can use our n knowledge, and we can also kind of uh, Take uh, um, take instruction from others, and uh, I can quickly. You can tell you can tell me your experience, and I can I can take advantage of your experience without, without having to repeat your experience. What motivated you to engage in this kind of study that eventually turned into a book, and perhaps you can pinpoint a moment or maybe a life story, a short anecdote that, that you can. Identify in time, so this is. I, I need to do this. I, I need to engage in, in this kind of work. Yeah. So as far as uh, yes, I've been doing this kind of work for a long time. Um, so it was 40 years ago I got involved in kind of the basic uh, theory of machine learning. Um, so that was identifying that machine learning, that learning generalization is, is fundamental. Um, so I suppose the, the, the uh, point was that I thought that um, um, you know, computer science at that time, the study of how, what things were easy to compute and what was hard to compute, um, had gone a long way, and that's what that was. That was my day job. Uh, but I, I thought um, that you know, surely this will help in understanding uh, human learning, because you know, learning isn't so easy, and the things we can learn easily from experience are things which are kind of easy to learn and m most things may be hard to learn. Okay, so the idea is that we, we learn things which are easy to learn. <coughs> then much later I tried to combine learning with reasoning. Um, and then as far as you ask about the book, uh, so more recently at the third stage of uh, inside where, where I um, um, kind of had this, where I realized that if I put one more layer on this, then I had a model of Cognition, which I was happy with. Okay, so previous, it was clear that just learning from examples isn't everything. That's pretty clear. And then, even if you can chain together what you've learned, that's essential. Seems, yeah, we should all do that. Uh, but it wasn't clear where you could run with that. Um, but if, but if in addition you also do this take instruction, and that sounds pretty like a human-like system. <laughs> so 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 I think the, what I have now is has some completeness. So not. Not, has some roundedness or some integrity. So it's a model which I'm happy to discuss as being a. It obviously doesn't capture everything about human behavior clearly, but it's not meant to. Um, so uh, just having some some uh, some model which I thought which I'm happy with as as telling a reasonable story. Okay, a more complete story than I had before. So I thought a book is what to do. So that's the book. It, it yeah, 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 oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, can I ask another question? Yeah, sure. Um, is there any particular or evidence or set of evidence that, that you found very compelling and, and eventually, let's say, you, it's, it's like your opinion that it supports your model? Yeah, okay, yeah, that's an excellent question. So, so, so in some sense, um, 
So obviously I don't want to say anything which contradicts some known fact in some other, other science. Okay? And so that's why to do this, one has to look around and, and try to educate oneself. Um, I don't think I've, I'm, I'm doing that, so no one has so far objected to, to that. Uh, but, uh, but, you know, the uh, basis of this is, is more an internal uh, theoretical basis of the theory supporting itself. It's, it's consistent with, with common sense, I think. It's consistent with various scientific findings, but it's not the kind where it relies on last year's uh, result from neuroscience. Okay, so I'm not exploiting the most recent discovery in any field, um, but I'm taking um, aware of mainstream <laughs> results in these other various fields. Okay, so it's um, um, it's, it's not. A, I, I think you know. I do find that many popular science books, like you know, quoting very particular experiments, to say, "Oh, this, uh, this supports my theory." Um, but you know, I want to avoid that because uh, um, it's, it's not appropriate. I mean, uh, you know, one needs to. Uh, if you want, if you've got a theory and you want experimental support, then somehow you need to do the experiment. You know, uh, to test the theory after you know the theory. Just saying that, you know, some random result supports my theory is, is, isn't good methodology. <laughs> so, uh, this uh, ability or characteristic of educability, how does one train it, or can you actually train it? Can you become more educable? <laughs> well, okay, so, well, okay, so that's a question uh, asked in the book that, um, 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 well, people, t uh, okay, so that's a question, I, I have this definition, I don't, I, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> but um, almost every ability we have, you can improve by practice or something. Okay, everything is there's nothing which is totally fixed at when you're born. So presumably you can, but you know it remains to be seen seen in the, in the future. I think. But obviously many people in, in the education world talk about you know teaching people to learn that kind of stuff. So uh, presumably there's a lot of scope for making people more educable. I think, but. Uh, as of now, one has to do experiments to figure that out. But yeah, but that's that's uh, clearly uh, uh, number one question. Yeah, your work is so interdisciplinary, um, and it's sort of I think everyone sort of supports interdisciplinary research now. But it's still difficult for people to branch out. And as you say, you have to look around a lot. Um, do you think this is sort of the the better way to to do science, so that everyone different fields communicate together and talk to each other, or should people continue sort of minding their own business? What do you think? Um, yeah, so there was a panel on this earlier. Were, were you there? Oh, uh, I saw just glimpses. Of okay, it. okay, okay. Uh, so, um, so, so everyone uh, was people who run institutions. They were all for interdisciplinary work. Um, but from the, the so okay, so interdisciplinary work is great. Uh, but here the question was for all the young scientists. In, 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 you know, how does it affect them? And. Um, so, um, so the, I think the reality is that if you're a young scientist, you have to establish yourself and, and do something and be recognized for it. So it's much harder for a young scientist to jump around and, this, and it's not in their interest. Um, so it's much easier to do if you're further along in your career. And, and especially if, if, if what you do, um, so in my case, what I've done, although I've done many different things, it's always been some natural. I'm always trying to use something which I, I've got some angle on something and trying to, trying to use that. Um, so that's an easy way to do to do it. So, um, so certainly, if you organise science, then making it interdisciplinary is, is, is great. Um, but um, for the individual scientist, it's uh, you know, practicing it is, <laughs> is something else. And so, um, so in, pre in preaching it, one has to be careful. It's complicated. Okay. It's complicated. <laughs>